So if we can start by focusing on Vatana's recent hybrid IT survey, can you tell us a little bit about what the survey revealed in terms of the changing demands being made on IT during the uh, the ongoing pandemic? Yeah, um, there's I mean there's a lot of findings, Phil, as um, as you you've probably seen in the um, in the survey, um, and some very interesting some very interesting revelations from from our side. You know, we are we're helping customers on a on a journey towards the cloud and. You know, at a very high level, you know, it's difficult for any enterprise, particularly a complex enterprise, to respond quickly and migrate environments to cloud. You know, that's just not, you know, it's not, it's not feasible. And part of the reason Vatana exists is to help and enable that cloud journey through planning, through dependency mapping, through understanding the infrastructure components. So simply saying you know we know our environment is going to be under stress we're going to move to a public cloud platform to alleviate that stress is is almost impossible um but particularly um you know a high percentage of the people that responded to the survey uh, were, were somewhere on that journey from uh, from cloud uh, from uh, on-premise to cloud um, whether that was you know single applications or, or multiple um, apps plus infrastructure so, so the, the, the some of the the findings that stood out for me was, um, you know, firstly, um, you know, the volume of outages, um, infrastructure outages that people who had remained on premise or had halted their cloud journey as a result of the the, the pandemic saw, you know, so we had a um, you know fifty percent, fifty eight percent rather increase in. Um, in outages for uh, for people who had halted their cloud journeys versus 21% um, who had who had moved to cloud or, had, or part way through their cloud journey. So just a, a you know massive uptick in outages for those who are running on-premise infrastructures. So it's a you know it's a great piece of uh, advertisement for our uh, for the public cloud vendors, right? So you know a three x nearly a three x increase in outages for environments where they were running on-premise versus uh, versus public cloud um another uh, another area is just visibility you know um and um yeah we had you know roughly 70 percent of the people that had halted the cloud journey saying you know we just don't have visibility of our problems you know we can't see the uh, we can't get quickly to the root cause of our problems um as a uh, as a result of the uh, of the pandemic uh, versus 35% who are in cloud. So just lack of visibility, um, you know, uh, versus um, versus those who would uh, move to cloud. And, and finally, um, you know, a, a significant, and this, this for me is probably the most interesting um, uh, finding, just this, this very significant over-provisioning of infrastructure uh, for on-premise customers. So, you know, as we all know, probably the main benefit of the cloud is it's, you know, just the, the flex, right? Our ability to quickly flex, you know, bring agility to IT infrastructure, bring ag agility to the business um, at times like these. You know, that's frankly not possible with a traditional on-premise infrastructure short of buying um, our way out of the problem. So, um, you know, 84% of the respondents came back to say we had to over provision on premise resources um, to, uh, you know, to ensure performance um, in this, you know, very different way of working. Um, so enabling home working, enabling different peak cycles, you know, the, 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 the working day has changed so profoundly um, since, uh, since the start of COVID-19. That it's almost it was almost impossible for for enterprises to predict what that workload what those workloads would look like, so an eighty four percent increase in on premise over provisioning versus still a not insignificant forty four percent of those who are in the cloud or on their way to the cloud that had to over provision, but again nearly double the over provisioning requirements for those on prem versus uh, public cloud. Okay, and I guess you alluded, I think. I so to IT performance, I guess a lot of people are, for, for some obvious reasons, maybe some not so obvious, experience IT performance issues, particularly the home working, all that. And um, what did the survey tell you about that? And I guess were a lot of people struggling to identify these issues, let alone you know come up with any solutions. 
Yeah, so vi visibility is a, um, it was highlighted as a challenge. So, you know, again, back to the percentages, but, you know, 71% of those who responded said lack of visibility was a major issues, a major issue with their overall IT systems uh, versus 35% in the cloud. Um, so again, a, you know, significant uptick in those who are running on-premise uh, versus cloud who were finding it difficult to to get to the root cause of problems and that you know feel that that's that's really no different to you know what we see outside of a global pandemic um, is that just the complexity of an on-premise infrastructure the kind of myriad of moving parts the you know myriad of tools the complexity of applications you know the workloads that you know the the dev teams are uh, are introducing um, into the infrastructure is is so complex that trying to you know trying to find and root cause a problem and identify a problem is like finding a needle in a haystack often, and it's not it's not because of lack of tooling. You know every one of these products, every one of the infrastructure components that an enterprise buys, you know has a management tool with it. Um, the challenge, and I'll, I'll, I'll capture a you know a customer that we um, we were with um, at the back end of last year. It happens to be a very large tier one bank in Germany. They said, "Look, you know, our, our challenge from a IT operations standpoint is not um, failure. We actually don't have many outages. Our problem is that we get twenty thousand alerts a week from hundreds of tools. You know, um, and trying to make sense of the noise." Um, was the verbatim feedback is almost impossible. You know, our operations team are deluged with alerts and what they're, they're, the bulk of their day is just trying to find out, you know, what's real and what's not. It's cutting through the noise. Now, um, you know, as we see it and as a respondents from the, uh, from the survey came back with, you know, the clouds, you know, fundamentally is simpler. You know, it, it, it's it's a n other platform, but it's a single platform, usually with a um, you know a single tool, or um, a, a limited set of tools that will provide context across that cloud, that singular cloud platform. The same customer, however, just to caveat that, the same customer said we're also moving to the three major cloud vendors. Those three major cloud vendors have their own tools. We are layering because of the hybrid nature of our environment, we're layering complexity on top of complexity. We're just bringing more tools into our environment because they're not discontinuing. They, they have to keep an on-premise infrastructure to manage the, the complexity and data sovereignty and all the reasons why we, uh, we see customers remaining on-premise. But that, that uptick in, in terms of lack of visibility was very, very telling. Um, for those who uh, you know halted their uh, their cloud migration journeys, and uh, with the cloud migration, I guess some people have carried on you know during the current sort of conditions with them and plenty of stops. I'm wondering, firstly, I guess is cost and or complexity being one of the obstacles that has halted people in the journey, uh, and some people are perhaps even not just halting but retreating back towards on-premises. What does the survey sort of give us any hint as to what's going on there? Yeah, I mean, um, look, for the, the, the firstly, and this, this kind of played out in the, in the, the kind of numbers that we saw um, halting their cloud journey. But, you know, as, as we've all seen, you know, working practices changed profoundly, you know, in March. Um, and a lot of businesses retreated back to BCP. You know, we're in a BCP scenario. You know, we, we have to keep the lights on. We have to enable home working. You know, we have to, um, you know, provide, um, you know, the resources to ensure that the lights are kept on, you know, and strategic projects like cloud migration were, were often was paused because the business was responding to a business continuity uh, issue, you know, rather than, uh, rather than anything else, it was, we've got to keep the lights on. Um, so, you know, the numbers that halted um, uh, the migration to cloud were primarily primarily focused on ensuring that their employees got access to the resources that they needed. Um, the second piece to your question, though, Phil, is, you know, the uh, the cost to complexity angle doesn't go away, you know, whether it's, whether it's in the middle of a, a pandemic or not, you know, 
uh, the, and as I said right at the start, that the, the, the move to cloud is complex, you know, for most environments. You know, if it's a single app or it's a set of applications, it's relatively straightforward. But for most enterprise customers, you know, there's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of work to do to ensure that the right applications, the right components of infrastructure are moved to the right cloud platform or not, as the case may be. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the, there is a, you know, there's a relatively complex and, um, you know, time bound um, or lengthy time bound exercise to, to help that, that cloud migration journey. And uh, as I said, we, we firmly believe the numbers that, halt, that halted their cloud migration journeys was simply because they've got to keep the lights on rather than prevailing cost and complexity. Um, the, the final point or, or question you raised there was um, was about retreating from cloud. Um, I don't think that was in response to uh, the pandemic. You know, we've we've seen a number of our customers um, moving components out of the cloud because they didn't do the work up front. You know, they didn't uh, really analyze their applications, analyze the dependencies of those, of those applications, but more importantly, understand how the on-premise infrastructure would map to uh, the public cloud. And as such, either had very significant operational challenges with moving applications to the cloud, um, just because the cloud couldn't perform, or um, the price point from the public cloud wasn't matching the price point from on-premise, you know, and um, yeah, that's fine when, you know, we need agility or we need business continuity or we need burst capabilities. But when it's for BAU, it's very difficult to justify to a CFO the shift to public cloud when it's going to be a, you know, a significant uptick in cost.